Um, hi, I'm Lorna McQueen. I'm from Fairham College. Actually, I think our action research from Fairham College follows on really nicely from Harlow Colleges um, in terms of the perspective that we went in with, I suppose. So um, my team for action research was myself and three lovely maths coaches who we recruited to deliver our action research with our students. Um, so why did we choose the theme of looking at maths coaches to improve motivation and engagement? We're very aware, as the last presentation alluded to, that students generally don't have amazing experiences of maths at school. Well, the ones that we get that tend to be resitting. Um, we hear year after year, um, the, the teacher didn't help me or I never knew what I was doing. Um, I had any different maths teachers in year 11. Um, we hear a lot of these stories. And, and the main message that we took from that was that students didn't really feel that they were listened to or that anybody wanted to engage them or that there was a method to engage them. So we listened to that um, along with the fact that I did a degree last year and the topic of my degree was maths anxiety. So selfishly, I had a massive enthusiasm for looking into maths anxiety. So that was kind of where we were coming from um, when we started our action research. We decided on two models of maths coaching to explore over the academic year. Um, one being a one-to-one -one coaching method. So this was working with students on a one-to-one -one basis and it took place in a dedicated room outside of the classroom. Um, this was a real luxury. We did have to fight with our principal for him to allow us to do this um, because we had these three maths coaches who could obviously work with a lot of students. But we had a real belief um, and from the research that I conducted for the action research and within my degree, that actually students need to feel safe. Um, and we all know what it's like in class when you say, does anyone have a question? And you can see the faces of students who have questions, but they don't want to ask in front of somebody else. Um, they don't, maybe don't want to look silly. We felt that actually giving them this safe space to have a one-to-one -one time with a maths coach was, was invaluable and that we really wanted to try it to, to see how that worked. The other method of maths coaching, and we'll call this model two, so model one's one-to-one -one and model two, is small group intervention coaching. So this was something that the college were really keen for, keen for us to try. And we thought, actually, if we got these three members of staff who are all full time, um, let's utilise them in two different ways. And then wouldn't that give us an amazing comparison to then move forward with? So this small group intervention coaching took place within the classroom on some occasions, the majority of the time, to be honest. But then in other times, those students might be taken from the classroom and they would be worked with somewhere else. Um, I'll talk a bit more about the differences in the coaching models later on, but I kind of wanted to get in with the gritty stuff and look at some of our results so that you could see what did we actually find out? Is it worthwhile you're listening to the rest of it or do you just want to put me on mute? Hopefully not. Um, so when we looked at our results, we categorised them um, under motivation, engagement and confidence. So what we were looking for was does access to a maths coach, whether that be on a one to one basis or a small group basis, does it improve the motivation of students? Do they feel more motivated? Um, are they more engaged? And when I talk about engagement, I mean within their classroom setting. So does the lecturer report that actually this student now gets involved in group tasks? Are they more likely to ask questions? Are they arriving on time as opposed to five minutes late because they don't really want to be there? Um, and, and really the biggest thing for me personally and, the, and my three maths coaches was confidence. We wanted these students to feel more confident. We wanted them to feel happier about maths in general. I'm well aware that we weren't going to um, move mountains and, and, and you know make them come in and go, yes, it's a maths lesson again. But that confidence is really important. Actually, if I'm asking you to do something that you really struggle with, it's important that you've got a little bit of inner confidence in general about maths and then hopefully you feel like you can you can attack it and you can do something. So those were the three kind of themes that we looked at in terms of our results. Um, I haven't got too much data on the PowerPoint um, because I don't want to be too busy and too much for you to look at. But obviously the report will be on the Padlet so you can go and have a look at the actual data that we've got. Um, I've just put up here um, some statistics that I thought were really important. So this is from model, 
model, uh, I've, mixed, I've mixed my slides now. This is from model two. So this is from model two of our um, coaching method. So this is where students are worked with on a small group basis. So you can see clearly um, from this data, hopefully, all of the white bars that go up vertically are an improvement in confidence. So this was looking at that element of confidence. So you can see that we've had students that may have rated themselves at the beginning as a one for confidence, have jumped all the way up to a three. And our most impressive improvement was going from rating themselves a two up to a five, which is amazing. Yes, we've had five students that have said they've dropped in confidence levels, but can we just attribute that to the maths coaching? Um, we didn't ask that question and that's something that we would look at doing in future you know why do you feel less confident in maths we need to follow that up with a follow-up question hopefully it's not because of our intervention um, but it's definitely something that we need to explore so really positive results in terms of the small group intervention um, we did a pre-questionnaire so before we started working with the uh, on the small group intervention, every single GCSE math student in our college, which is around 300, they were all given a very short maths questionnaire, had three questions on. They all completed that. And then, as we've already talked about, COVID-19 happened. Um, so we created a form online and sent it out. And um, we got 85 responses for that. So I think that's really positive having nearly a third. And we were able to match up 35 of those with the initial. And that's why we have 35 results here for you to have a look at. Moving on, looking here at some words that we got. And this is from the coaching model, the first one, where students had one to one coaching access. So they were on their own with a coach. Um, and these were just some of the quotations that we got from students. That were, that were the lovely to hear. And I don't believe, knowing our students, I don't believe they were doing this to stroke our egos. I think this is genuinely how they felt. Um, the, the overall feedback was that it was a positive experience for them. There was lots of mentions of, I just get it now, because I could spend half an hour as a maths coach. What, that doesn't make sense. Can you show me another way? Can we do this with, you know, can you show me how to do it? In a different way can you show me a different type of question can we look at an exam question because it was very fluid we were completely led by the student in coaching sessions in terms of how quickly we worked how much we repeated something whether they needed to move on to another task um, so the feedback was more qualitative from the one-to-one -one coaching because we had less students to work with we could gauge that from them so just looking a little bit more at the actual coaching methods and how they worked, just in case you wanted to replicate this. Um, so looking at the one to one coaching sessions, this was model one. We have within the college allocated a room that we've called the maths hub, which is adjacent to our staff room. And it's a dedicated maths coaching room. Um, so we had to really persuade our principal to give us a spare room, but we pulled out all the stops and managed to get it. Um, within that room, we've got posters, we've got manipulatives, we've got number lines, we've got two whiteboards, we have access to IT. So when the students go in there, they have access to everything that they might need for their coaching session, as do the coaches. Um, we would only ever have one or two maths coaches working one to one in there at the same time. The other maths coach, if they need to choose the maths hub, we always had a free classroom allocated for them. Um, so there was never that feeling of, Although you've got the coaching, you're being crammed in with lots of other people and other things going on. Students were identified by lecturers for one-to-one -one coaching. So as a lecturer, although I manage the team, I also lecture in maths as well. I identified students, generally our lower grade three students, who I thought they, they need a push, they need a confidence push. I want them to have more input. I want them to be more engaged in class. I want them to feel like they're, they're in there and they're being valued. So we will primarily lecturers would refer students to me and then I would allocate them to the coaches on the coaches timetables. Each coach had 24 coaching sessions per week with different students. Um, assessments and self-efficacy reports were also a starting point. So if we had students saying, I really like to see a maths coach, I really think it would benefit me, then we listened to that as well. You know, it wasn't just on lecturers recommendations. As I said before, we tried to run this model really fluidly. We didn't want to have barriers to students engaging. We wanted them to feel listened to the whole way through. 
Sessions lasted between half an hour and an hour, depending on how much input the students needed. I would say generally students tended to stay for the whole hour. Um, if not, it was because they felt they completely nailed whatever they were doing and they kind of wanted to go off on a bit of a high back to the class and go, woohoo, I know what I'm doing now. Um, so it wasn't a negative thing. Um, topics and skills that were covered in the coaching sessions were recorded on Pro Monitor, which we use at the college. So every coach was responsible for making a note on each student. This wasn't held on the student's main page. This was held in a separate area and it was more used for the coach's own reflections so that they could reflect on what worked well with this session this week uh, with this student. Could I replicate that with another student? Could I do that again with the same student next week? Um, and that was really useful when we started to look at collecting the data and, and then being able to have their own self reflections and also we shared it with the students. We said, do you remember the first time you came for your coaching session? This is how you felt about multiplying and dividing fractions. Today, you've just told me and you've just shown me what you can do. Look at the distance you've traveled. So feeding it back to the student as well. Moving on to the small group intervention coaching and, and how that worked. So coaching was mainly in the classroom. So at the beginning of a lesson, as a lecturer, I had a coach allocated to that particular class um, and they would join me at the beginning of class. They would be there for the starter activity and the introduction to the lesson. Um, and at that point, I would then identify the students within that class that I felt needed some immediate intervention and some immediate coaching so that they could fully engage in the lesson. Um, so focus on those common weaknesses. So say, for example, I'm delivering straight line graphs and I already know that students A, B and C always seem to struggle with negative numbers. They just, it, it's always a bit of a difficulty for them at the beginning of lessons. I would say to the coach, could you please support these three students and help them with today's activities? We're very clear to make a difference between being an LSA and a maths coach. Um, and that the coach was there to facilitate and support in what they were doing. Um, and at, um, the lecturers would signpost those students accordingly so we could do that. Um, within the lesson, if actually one of the students I'd allocated to a coach seemed to be getting on fine and they said, I'm quite happy to do this on my own, but another student was struggling, the coach may engage with that student as well. Um, so it was very fluid. For the first couple of weeks, it was difficult to, not difficult, but a challenge to kind of hone the way we were working to make it successful. But again, we listened to lecturers and we listened to students to make sure that we could do it as best as possible. Um, and at the end of class, the coaches provided some verbal feedback to the lecturer about what had taken part, what had taken place rather, who might need some additional support, who was really successful in the activity that they were doing. So two quite different models, but utilising the coaches for both of them. Um, this is my last slide, you'll probably be glad to know. Um, and it's a bit of a conclusion and some recommendations and just food for thought. I think the main thing that I've gauged from this action research is that it's probably posed many more questions for me than it's answered, which I think is good. I'm excited by that because it's I'm enthused to carry on and to do more um, and to, to tweak how we're using our coaches for the best, best results for our students. Um, so I think the main summary for me was that both methods of coaching were beneficial. Students liked having somebody else to support them. We all know if we could teach groups of five students at a time, the pass rates would skyrocket and the interaction we would get with our students would be amazing. We all know the value of having more of us, more staff. So having these three coach members, you know, it's a bit of a numbers game, I suppose. We've got more people to to throw at the students. So both models definitely worked. Um, there was benefits to both. Um, so we know what we're doing has got value. We just need to hone what we're doing, I think. Um, research that we've conducted suggests that immediate intervention is, is, is powerful, is needed. A student struggles with a particular topic. We make a note of it. We know from an assessment that they're struggling with the topic. We might not be able to cover that topic for another two weeks. By that point, have, have we lost that enthusiasm? Have, have they gone even further back in their understanding? So being able to go straight in with that intervention, whether it be one-to-one -one sessions where students say to the coach, we did this this week in class and I didn't know what I was doing. Please can we cover more of this? Or I know this is coming up next week in class. Please could we have a look at that? That, that ability to be fluid and immediately go and help the learners is, is really powerful. Um, 
there are limitations and there are restrictions to the analysis of our data, I think, because we're comparing apples with pears. We did two different things. So it is difficult to say which one is better. I know I have my own preferred model of coaching, but we used different um, questionnaires for both sets of coaching. So again, comparing our results probably isn't a fair basis um, because we're not comparing like for like. And obviously we had the one-to-one -one coaching we concluded just after Christmas. So we got all of our data for that, but the small group intervention, we had COVID-19. So, and it's, I think it's difficult for students to think back to how they felt before we went into lockdown. You know, are they reflecting on how they feel because they're in lockdown? In terms of the confidence marks that went down, that could be, we could attribute that to that. Um, so two methods of coaching was great, but actually being able to compare them or analyze them is a bit challenging. If another college wanted to replicate this, and I've put more detail on this in our report, um, obviously we had the luxury of hiring the three maths coaches, but I think that was imperative. The three members of staff we have are amazing, obviously I'm a bit biased, um, but they come from maths teaching. Two of them are qualified teachers, but just don't want to teach, but they love maths. They want to be involved. Um, and the other uh, lady that we have, she comes from a um, tutoring and a coaching background. Um, so I think it's really important that you have dedicated members of staff to do this, whether it be a high level teaching assistant or um, an LSA that really has a passion for maths and wants to do something really different. Um, we're working with a lot of colleges in our network who want to replicate this next year and looking at their, their, their model within their team and the resources, people resources that they have available to them and how they could adapt. Um, I'd really like to get some greater involvement from lecturers in terms of their initial thoughts about what we do um, and get their buy-in. I think that would be really important. Um, and further exploration into trials and methods of coaching, because there's so many different ways that we could be doing this out there. Um, and I'd like to spend a bit more time probably just giving myself loads more questions, to be honest. But I, I think it's important that we don't just stick with what we've done and say, this worked for this cohort, let's do it. We're going to have even more challenges come September. And, and I want to be able to support those students and, and give them somebody that will listen to them, somebody that will support them, as well as me as their lecturer.